personal hygiene, whether the guy is wearing the right kind of attire, whether the cooking is happening properly or not, uh, the premise hygiene levels, and we looked at uh, even food quality for that matter through cameras. So that about at least 90% of the FSSA I checklist could be monitored through the camera itself. Hey guys, welcome to Backstage with Millionaires. I'm Caleb, your host, and today, the guest that we have on the show is Adit. He's one of the co-founders of a company called Wobot, and what they've built is a video analytics tool which enables companies to keep track of their operations through use of pre-existing CCTV cameras using AI. Um, so it's been a pretty crazy couple of years for you guys. You started in 2017, you recently got two very prominent customers on board, um, IRCTC and also ColtFit. Uh, I'm curious to know sort of how the journey began for you guys. How did you realize that this was something that companies actually needed? And what were the first steps that you took towards actually building your, your startup? Actually, the journey starts much, much earlier. And the journey starts when I started working for a conglomerate in 2010. I joined their mergers and acquisition department. And over there, so this conglomerate was into retail, hospitality, manufacturing, automotive, various sectors, and, and uh, geographically well spread, right, uh, in the globe. Now, what we realized when we were acquiring these assets and trying to integrate them or restructure them in certain cases was that most of the times uh, we face challenges while integrating or restructuring was making sure that the manual tasks or standard operating procedures were being followed as per the company that was acquiring them, right? Um, the efficiency levels were being being done as per what the company has uh, as per their SOPs. And, and what we realized during that five, six years was that most of the tasks in, in whether it's manufacturing sector, whether it's retail, whether it's hospitality are done manually, right? If you put the hospitality sector and the manufacturing sector and the retail sector together, you're looking at about 800 million people which are working and doing manual tasks, right? So you need some sort of a tool to kind of guide them and give them a feedback whenever things are not being done in a correct way. Or if they're being done in a correct way, well, you got to pat them on the back and say, hey, job well done. Sure. Right? So uh, in 2015, fast forwarding when I got done with this job, um, I we ended up building a, a digitizing tool where these SOPs could be, could be digitized and then a feedback could be given through an app that, hey, you were not following this process and I cl clicked an image of that, I gave you one out of two on this particular process, right? Because you realized how inefficient it was to use Absolutely. pen and paper to sort of record these. Exactly, and that was the status in 2015 across across sectors, across the globe, right, in, in most cases. Uh, so we said the step one for us is to digitize the data that is being collected. And we did that for about two odd years and then we realized another challenge in that, that the the analytics that came out from the data collected was as good as the person who was collecting the data, right? So there was a lot of bias in the data that was being collected, A, and B, the data being collected was not continuous. It was, you know, at once a month, maybe once in two weeks, that the person would go click an image or a video and give a score, right? That doesn't create a continuous feedback loop for the employee or the employer. Employees are gonna act totally different when they know that someone is, you know, sort of analyzing yeah. them and, and auditing their their whole procedure. Exactly, and, and not in a negative way, right? No. In, in a constructive way, because uh, we're, it's easy to give someone a handbook that, hey, these are the SOPs that need to be followed, but uh, trying to keep the efficiency levels, you tend to miss out a few tasks that need to be done, right? So there has to be this continuous constructive feedback loop that I keep saying. So that's when we looked up and we saw, hey, CCTVs are there. They're capturing huge amount of data. They're looking at the manual tasks, uh, recording it, not essentially giving feedback on that, right? Uh, so over the two years that we had built this digitizing app, we realized what were the modules that companies look for in different sectors. So we trained it, we collected the data in the first initial year and trained those modules sector specific. So for example, in a hospitality setup, we trained it for monitoring hygiene behavior. We monitored, uh, we, we built module for monitoring customer interactions. Um, then similarly, in a manufacturing setup, we looked at worker safety, workplace safety, and certain manual tasks that might be specific to that particular industry. So we spent year, year and a half gathering the data, training it, and when we felt that it was ready to go out there, that's when in 2017 we actually launched the, 
product. Okay. So 2017 was more of a launch year, but there was like a seven year work that kind of went uh, behind it. Sure. Yeah. And it's a pretty complicated uh, product and a, and a complicated service that you've built. I mean, using CCTV cameras and machine learning and, and computer vision, and you're putting it all in one and, and creating this really incredible product to sort of analyze and keep track of of employees. I mean, that must have been a pretty, are you, are you like a techie yourself or is it mainly so I, people I self taught that... myself tech, but my co-founders are techies and they, uh, they add all the technical, um, value, um, in, in the business and bring, so, so they have run computer vision companies in the past. So they've kind of brought the expertise. Uh, sure. Sure. Team, yeah. So then in 2017, um, is that when you guys, were you, were you approached by our, IRCTC so, or did you guys approach? So actually with IRCTC, we were already, they were already using our audit and inspection app, the digitization app. Oh. So we were already in with IRCTC. So we were able to talk to them and understand, hey, how is this audit and inspection app working for you? What else can we do for you? So there was a lot of interaction with them before we could do a pilot for them in 2017. And what, what did that pilot look like? Was it just like a, a handful of cameras or did you kind of launch so your product across the board. Usually a pilot always starts with about a little uh, handful of cameras, less less number of cameras. But as you keep building the value proposition, they want to start spreading it. So we started off with one or two kitchens and then we spread all, all across once they could actually see the value proposition coming in. And if you could just describe to me exactly what those cameras were doing in the kitchens themselves. So it's, it's very simple. So basically FSSAI, which is the food governing authority in India, prescribes the SOPs that need to be followed in a kitchen. So we took that as a handbook and trained those modules. So it was on personal hygiene, whether the guy is wearing the right kind of attire, whether the cooking is happening properly or not. Uh, the premise hygiene levels and we looked at uh, even food quality for that matter through cameras so that about at least 90% of the FSS say I checklist could be monitored through the camera itself. Gotcha. And were you also working with CultFit at that time or was that? So CultFit actually started in April of 2018. Uh, so it was after IRCTC. Gotcha. Um, and, and I'm that, sure that kind of gave you an opportunity to kind of maybe iron out some of the bugs as well and yeah, sort of prepare the product. Yeah, we got more training data by then. Some of the modules that we had built had become more accurate. So we could actually provide CultFit with the accuracy that they were looking for. So they have two arms. They have CultFit and EatFit. And so uh, EatFit is essentially the one that supplies the food uh, to the customers and then CultFit is their gyms or their classes, essentially. And so EatFit was more sort of in the same vein as what you were doing yeah, with yeah. IRCTC, but then was it was it at all complicated for you guys to take that technology and apply it to CultFit? So uh, what we've realized, right, when we were building, we wanted to build a very lean stack. Um, and so we built only two architectures. And those two architectures still date are used for training different use cases. Uh, one is activity recognition and the others being able to identify the person again on another camera. So most of the use cases are built on this architecture. For us, if we get a new use case, we'll train that use case. We'll just need certain amount of videos or clips or maybe images, depending on the use case. We train for it and then we're good to go. Okay, so that's those are your two sort of major customers, 2017 IRCTC and then 2018 is ColtFit and, and EatFit as well. But were you working with other companies at this point as well? Yes, yes, we were, we were we were doing several pilots. Um, so, so one of the things of, of this particular solution was that not a lot of people are aware of it, right? So there is a period of pilots or POCs happening where they would do it on two or three units. And then once they see value on it, they'll be like, okay, let's subscribe me for all my units, right? So during that same time, we got as many pilots as we could. And in 2018, we saw those pilots converting into production units or so scaling up to, let's say 20% or 40% of their total number of units. Uh, so yeah, we, we by early 2018 we had about we had about six seven paying customers. The real growth actually came for us towards the end of 2018 uh, when we suddenly started growing. I think our models also became more accurate. Our use cases increased, and hence we were able to show more value proposition to a customer, whether it was in a hospitality setup or a manufacturing setup. And does that model get uh, more accurate over time simply because uh, the computer has? sort of more to work with, like you've filmed more video and so it's it's learned more or is it actually you've got you've got people working sort of in the back end to to keep sort of improving the product? I'm sure that's kind of a mix of both. It's, but It's a mix of both, right? So I think there is a, a industry expertise that is required to build the right use cases. And then there is 
n number of data that is required per use case to make give it let's say a 98% accuracy level when delivering to the customer okay so you guys are seeing you're seeing more growth it's sort of like the end of 2018 at this point and it seems like it's kind of like a it's a no brainer right like i'm sure you you show people sort of like a demo or you or you just show them a video of how the product works like it must be kind of like a like a light bulb moment for them where they're like where has this product been all my life right because it's you know something that you used to have to hire people to do and it was totally inefficient like you were saying you know people are writing down on pen and paper even if it's digitized right it's still it's it's inadequate right but as soon as you start hooking up these cctv cameras and they're just sort of monitoring in the background and people don't even pay attention to them that's where all of a sudden there's this huge value add right so is that sort of that's that's how you started to get more customers and the ball started rolling a little bit more quickly yeah yeah absolutely so we 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 could we had the modules which were ready now so we could quickly plug it into their existing cameras or their videos and they could see the results coming instantaneously versus 2017 18 when we still had to train to a certain level before it was visible to the customer so it made our sales cycle i would say or our convincing cycle much much uh, faster but even after convincing right you have to still give him a flavor of a pilot uh, we've seen with saas products there's always a 14 day or a 30 day trial so we we took the same approach we said hey we're confident of our product we want you to be confident of what you're buying so take a 15 day free poc try it out you like it and then let's let's talk about scale up right so in 2018 transitioning into 2019 we build up our scale up strategy right hey how do we if it's a 6 month sales cycle how can we bring it down to 3 months and what are the things that are involved in that sales cycle so what we realized was that there are three components there is lead generation and within lead generation uh, post post a qualified lead you have awareness right and after awareness you have a pilot and pilot leads to a, eventually a scale up what we realize unlike other saas startups the awareness during the lead generation was not that much it wasn't like a let's say a uh, crm right or 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 one of those uh, self desk help desk solutions where people are actually searching for it online no one's really searching for the keywords that we are selling with right so we had to mold the keywords we had to do a lot of outreach programs through channel partnerships through uh, free pr to a certain degree uh that people were aware that such a solution existed right and that kind of created the funnel and then we created the steps that would bring our sales cycle from funnel generation to closure from 6 months what it was earlier to maybe 4 months 3 months and that's that's what 2019 is really looking for us we're looking to scale up we're not only looking to scale up within india we have a sales team now set up in the us and we're also scaling up in the US in the hospitality and manufacturing sector. Wow. So the the future looks really sounds really exciting and uh I wish you all the best as you kind of roll this out to the rest of the world. Um if you want to know more about uh Wobot, there will be some links down below in the description. You can you can find them online at wobot.ai. Um and if you want to know more about uh Adit's journey uh, as an entrepreneur, there will also be links for that as well. Um and also if you have any questions about Wobot or uh Adit's journey then feel free to leave a comment down below and also would love it if you could share this video with anybody that you think uh would be interested by it. Thank you so much for watching this video and thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Wow, those are very squeaky, hey? Yeah. <laughs> We've been sort of <laughs> So we did well I think with the chairs no yeah yeah, yeah. We, we, it's like it's like we've been holding it in or something like just like <laughs> sitting stiff and making sure that they don't squeak yeah